concept deals with someone that was here on Earth and then finds the need to kind of travel very far into the universe to in search of new things. In the early 80s to mid 80s, we had this idea that this music was a snapshot of a certain type of vision of what the future was, was going to be about, that the music would be used not only just for dancing and not just only for, for uh, uh, social, you know, the backdrop for social type of atmospheres, but used to be able to describe things that we had dreamt about or, or used, to, be descri or used to, to describe things that we could not say about where we think we're all headed. So The Sleeper Wakes is actually uh, very much in, in line with this, this, this mentality that, that, that we used to have um, that came to produce like X-102 and X-103 and uh, the whole underground resistance. I think it would be easy to say because we were kind of surrounded by factories with you know, workers and machinery and this type of systematic type of way of, 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 of working that it played a role. But I, I mean, I was too young and, and a lot of the, the other uh, artists that come from Detroit, we, we were all around the same, same age. So, we, we never went, you know, we, we never went into these factories. So my influence doesn't really come from, you know, from that. Um, it, it, it more so comes from science fiction, uh, comics in Detroit. They were accessible. I mean, there was a comic book store that sold candy on the corner of every neighborhood. So that's where you went frequently. <laughs> and so that's, that's where you would buy these things. And, and so it's not a, it's not, it's not a surprise that you know, Detroit, you know, te techno would come from that. No wonder that you know, Juan would make something called Cosmic Cars, R9, and th those type of things. It's not a surprise because we were all influenced by these things. But it wasn't until I listened to Tour de France where it, I kind of understood that music could be used to describe things. Maybe the first uh, piece of work by Kraftwerk that really explained the symmetry between human and machine and how they work together. As you get older, you kind of want to go back to these things. You kind of want to kind of revert back to the things that influence you to, to, to get to a certain point and bring these things along with you. So, you know, it was just a matter of time be, uh, that I could kind of bring, you know, these subjects, not Silver Surfer, but at least the scenario of Silver Surfer back into my life. <laughs> It doesn't necessarily always have to be danceable for three hours. It doesn't necessarily always have to be the top ten hits on Beatport. It have to be what the style is of the, of the time or the flavor of the day. It could just be about a vision that you had about the year 2050 in New York. How we look at the stars in the sky and there's the twinkle and the, and the blinking and the dark backdrop and shooting stars and planets and uh, we have to assume that things are circular, spiraling, um, uh, like the Milky Way and planets around them. It's something where electronic music can, can have a role, mainly because it deals a lot in frequencies. Frequencies have the ability to be able to penetrate much more, much deeper and, and, and can travel much further than, uh, than, you know, than actual notes on it, I think. So, um, yeah, that's, that's why. <laughs> it's always this huge whale that you have in front of you with these little pieces of equipment on them, a certain type of protection that a DJ has. And I, and I thought that, you know, maybe now is the time to, to really expose the, the person from head to toe. It brings more of a visual connection between what the people are listening to, how the DJ is acting, and also what he's wearing is all in line. As, uh, so there comes you know, jumpsuits and things that are really designed for uh, travel. A lot has to do with why people are there and what they want. It's not so much what, what was happening during the night, it's, it's when they leave, how much of that are they actually taking with them?
they're, they're kind of asking for something. They're asking to be kind of taken away. And so, um, and so it, it's my job to prescribe the scenario for this. If I can create it, if I can conceptualize it and play it in the direction in which I'm thinking about, then someone should be able to feel it. If, if, I'm, if I'm very good at what I do or if I can get better at what I can do to manipulate the music in a way to make you understand that it's something that is dealing with the future or it's something that's dealing with, um, then I become a better, a better producer, I become a better DJ or someone that presents the ideas. And, uh, and I can relay the message better, you know, but that takes time. I have to get better. I have to get better at manipulating and configuring the, the music to be able to, to say the words that I, I'm not going to say uh, verbally. I, I, need to, I need to be able to say a full sentence, a full paragraph, a short story uh, within three hours and using time and sound and things like that. And then from that point on, you have to decide whether it's, you know, it's, it's good enough. If not, then I have to go back to the drawing board and learn more and yeah, maybe producers, we have the rest of our lives to be able to, you know, to do that. And if we can't, perhaps maybe pass on information to the next generation of producers that can become better and better and better and better until we reach the objective. <laughs>
um, before I stop. somehow trying to go full circle, you begin to, you know, I, I become more of a, uh, a person, I, I suppose. And so it's just a natural, natural um, progression, I think.